A smart and driven girl turns her babysitting service into a niche enterprise for dissatisfied married men. Shirley Liner, a bright and well-organized junior student, describes operating a babysitting service, a company that provides companionship for middle-aged married men, in a cabin. The youngster claims that she started the company not because she had problems with her parents, but rather so she could pay for college. In recent months at Alfred E. Shirley was in the classroom at Groves High School, taking notes, as her instructor talked about the impending SATs. While this was going on, Melissa Rowan's indifferent seat mate inquired of their friend Brenda Woodberg whether her promiscuous stepsister Nadine had attempted to have a relationship with her biological brother Scott. She noted that if they did, it wouldn't be considered incestuous. After class, a focus Shirley walked home and looked through her room for her calculus textbook in order to study for the college entrance examinations. When her mother Tammy couldn't locate it in her room, she recommended looking in the basement, where the teen's lawyer father Stan was working. Salesman Michael Beltran picked her up shortly after for a babysitting job. Strangely, the bashful student pushed her hair behind her ear as he welcomed her, signaling her interest in the married guy. Shirley met the Beltran's kid Adam, who she would watch while the parents were out for a conference, and their wife Gail when they got at the Beltran's house. The teenager went upstairs where he saw Mikey, the older brother, who was furious because he desired privacy with his younger sibling. The mother, however, emphasized that they required a nanny to look after them in case of an emergency. Michael and Gail met Jerry Tuckman and his wife Tina, a fellow businessman, that evening at the restaurant. The next year, the businessman discussed building two additional restaurants and appointing the salesperson as his vice president. Adam unexpectedly contacted Shirley as she was preparing for her college exams because he had some dirt on him. The girl strolled and stopped when she saw a tiny city and observed the single man figure after she had placed the clothing in the washing machine in the basement. Back at the vehicle, Michael expressed interest in Jerry's proposition. Gail, however, wanted her husband to decline since she believed he was already succeeding in his current position as a salesperson. The man asked his wife to view the adjacent abandoned train before unlocking the car's front door, but she declined, saying they should return home because the kids were waiting for them. When the couple arrived home, Shirley was methodically using a cleaner with a strong aroma to remove some stains from the floor. Soon later, Michael drove the nanny back to her house. The adolescent started to complain about her stomach as they were driving, so the dad suggested they stop at a diner. There, the two began to quietly flirt with one another and discovered that they were both night owls who did foolish things. Shirley asked Michael how he met Gail shortly after describing her fixation with maintaining order. In answer, he said that his entrepreneur buddy Jerry introduced him to his wife, who had previously been difficult, outside of Ann Arbor. The married businessman inquired of the nanny whether she already had a partner before he left the meal. She answered, though, by glancing about at the idiotic patrons and making the implication that she didn't have one because boys her age were too immature for her. Michael brought the babysitter to visit the abandoned railroad on the way to Shirley's house, where they explored and ultimately shared a kiss that the guy afterwards regretted. He left an additional gratuity for her when he got to the teen's house. When the worried student got home, she looked at her earnings while washing her hands incessantly. She then turned to see her three reflections in the glass. When Michael realized what he had done, he was unable to sleep next to his wife. The following day, Shirley attempted to pay attention in class as they discussed reproductive health. While George, the boss, talked about their new possible automotive invention, Michael appeared distracted. The nanny went out with Melissa and Brenda at a coffee shop after class. The serious adolescent stopped her classmates' argument over ladies asking boys out, urging them to put their differences aside. Soon later, Michael, who was still there, grinned at the nanny through the glass. Gail suddenly walked up to her and asked her to watch her kids on the subsequent weeknight. But following her babysitting gig, the salesperson and the nanny ended up getting quite close in the car. The man afterwards paid the teenager generously after taking her home. After her session, Shirley went to her bedroom and took out all of her money, writing, trouble, on the top dollar note, then placed it back under her bed. When Michael got home, 
he started washing his clothing right away. The nanny had put it because to her fixation with maintaining things in their proper places, he realized afterward, since she had placed a lady next the small guy in his miniature city. The gifted student told Melissa that she had been making a lot of money from babysitting the next day in biology class. The salesperson also revealed to Jerry some of his private experiences, and Jerry was immediately intrigued by the idea of hiring a babysitter for him. Shirley gave Melissa the position after Michael contacted to seek for a babysitter for his friend. The entrepreneur shared private time with the new nanny as he drove her to the coffee shop after she had looked after the children. The astute adolescent approached her buddy and asked for 20% of her pay because it was she who had set up the job for her. Following the agreement, the friends went to a party where the shy Brenda requested Shirley to go with her so she could approach their classmate and Doug's buddy, who was also his stepbrother's friend, whom she had a crush on. Later, two of Jerry's pals called the nanny and asked for babysitters, which worried the nanny since they may go to jail. Melissa was informed of this and reassured her frightened classmate that they wouldn't be arrested. Shirley followed her friend's advice and decided to take one person for the business. Then her buddy recommended Brenda be brought on board for the other. The bashful Scott approached the studious youngster as she was about to leave the party and gave her his sweatshirt to keep her warm. He kissed his smart classmate shortly after, but she didn't return the favor. He excused himself after the unpleasant meeting and joined the gathering again. Michael sneaked into Shirley's bedroom through the window when she returned home. The married guy hid beneath the teen's bed while they kissed when Stan barged into the room unexpectedly to request some peroxide. After a short while, the nanny's father asked her whether she was dating Scott because her classmate had phoned the day before. The teen then reasoned that she needed to sleep since she was exhausted in order to get her father to go. Shirley's money cash was discovered strewn across the mattress after Stan left the room, and Michael came from beneath the bed with it. Brenda was taken to the woods by Mark Wessler, a friend of Jerry's, following her shift as a babysitter. The youngster, who was oblivious of the details Shirley had told her client, pushed away when he tried to kiss her. Embarrassed, the guy made a point of praising the nanny's beauty, which finally led to their having a private moment in the grass. Shirley received a call from Michael at the same time that she found out she was babysitting another customer. When Melissa and the diligent team contacted their recruit after Mark dropped Brenda off at her home, they explained that they had been working together since last month. The eager newcomer then made the request for another customer to babysit, demonstrating her unwavering dedication to joining the group. Shirley then organized the schedules of her babysitters and printed calling cards to start formalizing her business. The salesman's boss and wife joined Michael and Gail for supper in the interim. After supper, George approached his subordinate about the deteriorating standard of his job and inquired as to if there was a problem. The man refuted this, offering changes if the employer wasn't pleased with the final product. The boss's spouse and the salesman's wife entered the room shortly after, and the boss's spouse confessed that they occasionally hire Shirley or other females to watch the kids. Michael was stunned to learn that the teenager had operated a nanny agency when his boss handed him a calling card. Michael then shared some private moments with Shirley. They clashed over the expanding unlawful behavior after leaving the teenager off at home. The adolescent raised her offer to $300 after realizing the enormous danger to the company, and the man ultimately accepted it. The following day, Brenda approached Nadine and flaunted her brand new jacket, which she had purchased with money she had earned from babysitting. When her stepsister expressed an interest in making money, the girl approached her and requested her to fill in as a nanny for a customer without first consulting Shirley. When the entrepreneur learned this, she formally added the new hire to the team and demanded her 20% cut. Shirley lost customers as a result of Nadine betraying the company by creating a new one on her own and hiring her buddies. Due to this, the diligent adolescent questioned Brenda to find out if her stepsister was running a side business. Her companion, though, made the decision to keep the secret. Shirley and Melissa went to school that evening to go through their treacherous teammates' belongings after realizing they were being misled, with Michael watching over them. 
The three trashed everything to hide their actual intentions after Melissa discovered nothing in Nadine's locker. Michael told the frightened Gail he was at a meeting when he arrived home that evening. Because of this, the worried wife urged her husband to phone her whenever he anticipated being late. The pupils were shocked by how wrecked their school was the next day, which prompted the principal to summon everyone to the hall. Shirley and Melissa collected Nadine, Brenda, Barbara Yates, and Ollie Town in the music room before proceeding to the gathering. The leader then reminded them to always give her the promised 20% cut and to not steal her clients or flaunt expensive stuff. Melissa lingered with the astute entrepreneur after everyone had departed for the assembly and advised her to take a working holiday at Jerry's cottage. She created fictitious permission sheets so the girls could present their excursion as a school vacation while the males would inform their families that they were attending a company retreat. The babysitters and their clients all attended the trip on the day of the outing to spend some time together. After bringing some illegal substances to Michael, Jerry made it known that Brenda was the object of his specific attention. He made the observation that when the adolescent looked back, she would consider the experience to be outstanding. Later, Michael felt uneasy and left after seeing Shirley having a sexual encounter with another man. The teenager followed him and ran into a confused Brenda as she entered the bathroom. The salesperson touches the intelligent adolescent improperly before offering her an illegal pill in the present. In the meantime, Jerry barges into Brenda's restroom and tries to take advantage of her. The middle-aged man stops when the youngster abruptly shouts for her mother, traumatizing the teen as he leaves. Michael offers Shirley a ride home the next day. Brenda is simultaneously watching the children as the distraught nanny phones Scott to come get her so her client won't have to send her home. The distraught babysitter slams the door when she gets home, obviously shaken by her bad experience at the holiday home. Brenda tells Shirley the next day that she no longer wants to work for the company. She then consented and made a silent commitment regarding their illegal activities. Because she could reveal them, Melissa forbids the businesswoman from letting their buddy go when she hears about this. The intelligent girl just rejects her pal and tells her to go home and study for the test tomorrow. That evening, several middle-aged guys in disguise assault Scott and threaten him with bodily harm if he doesn't keep her sister quiet. Brenda queries the perpetrator when the hurt teen arrives at his house. The adolescent, though, is adamant that nothing occurred. Shirley runs into her hurt friend at the school cafeteria the next day. She approaches Melissa shortly after, and she admits to being the one who planned the beating. She argues that she has a commercial reason for doing what she is doing. Gail surprised Michael when she unexpectedly greets him when he arrives home early due to a call from their son's principal. The salesperson makes light of the fact that their child cursed their instructor when the wife tells it, which irritates her. Salesman Spouse is dissatisfied when he admits that his boss moved him to a low-profile account. In spite of the fact that they already have the protection they want, he irritably inquires as to how much money would make her happy. Gail, on the other hand, avoids conflict and tells Michael to speak with their kid. She then cancels their date night and leaves for a meeting. He walks upstairs to speak with Mikey as instructed by his wife. He finally understands the boy's situation and decides to curse his boss much like his kid did to the instructor. The salesperson instructs his youngster to look after his younger sibling before giving him money to purchase pizza. Nadine phones Shirley in the meanwhile to inform the professional that she needs to postpone their meeting due to approaching examinations. The smart adolescent grabs her laptop in a hurry, causing a box on the table to topple. She tells her classmate she will call later and hangs up shortly after. Michael, who is dissatisfied with his marriage, goes to meet the nanny and takes her to the abandoned railroad yard. The salesperson apologizes for allowing her to use an illegal drug inside the cabin while the car is still empty. He then implies that he and the nanny were a match when he says that Gail and he aren't compatible. The teen admits that they are definitely meant to be together since they are both bad but she insists that their relationship will be remembered fondly in the future. In response, Michael makes an attempt to persuade her to flee with him by stating that he no longer wants to keep her a secret. Shirley, however, only declines him when he makes it clear that he needs her in his life. The helpless salesperson replies that he'll keep paying the babysitter to stay with him. 
the adolescent, though, makes it quite plain that it's too late. The nanny is forced to hide as a wandering policeman appears out of nowhere. Michael says that he is only gazing around since he likes trains when the policeman questions him. Soon later, the policeman gives the guy the order to leave the yard. Shirley, who is alone herself, goes to the closest phone booth to contact Brenda, but Scott answers and informs her sister that she is unable to speak with her. Her classmate informs the girl that her stepsister is watching the children when she asks for Nadine. The entrepreneur discovers that their cunning buddy lied to her about canceling their session due to the tests after discovering this. She phones Melissa right away and tells her about Nadine, who is once again taking customers behind their backs. Jerry assists Shirley and her companion as they make their way to the parking lot where the trader and her client are. The man pulls the babysitter out of the trunk after getting out of the car and hands her to the teens. The older man assaults the man in the car while the two threaten to toss Nadine off a building. The businesswoman mistakenly releases the dangerous babysitter as she becomes sidetracked and glances at the familiar automobile. Shirley and Melissa clutch their teammate, who is going to tumble, as they get frightened. Fortunately, Jerry saves the day and helps them all out by raising the babysitter. The driver of the car exits it from behind them, startling Melissa. The intelligent youngster turns her head after seeing her friend's response and, to her surprise, sees her father, who turns out to be Nadine's customer. The businesswoman sobs after realizing what she has done. Years later, Shirley, who now has a new job and a car of her own, travels over to Michael's house and witnesses her former client joyfully interacting with his family. The former babysitter walks back to her car shortly after their eyes lock. She then sobs as she considers her babysitting, experience as a singular instance in her regular existence.